Hey yo, this is a gem pop warning. When this episode gets into them streets, it's going to be a lot of people that's mad at me. They're going to say I'm giving snitches a voice. They're going to call me a rat lover. They're going to say I'm breaking the rules. They're going to say all of that. But the reality is the streets ain't one sided. And it didn't end all good and glorious for a whole lot of dudes out there. A whole lot of dudes did stuff they thought they would never do. You heard? And we got to hear about them stories too. Or we feeding these kids in the streets a false narrative. Because every gangster and every gun busser ain't going to be your hero. You haven't looked in a dictionary and seen the definition of a serial killer? Yeah, once you kill, once you repeatedly kill, you're a serial killer. Yeah. But living living life in the hood, after I know I done done certain like that, I'm thinking, I ain't no turning back. I done already went too far to turn back. I, the, the last time I seen him, when I was walking off that stand, walking by him. I cried, man. Yeah, Mike, 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 you just keep it real, Mike. I, that's the shit I want to hear, though. That's the shit I want to hear that you was, you was getting bread. You was getting bread, and, 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 and you was fucking with nothing here and there. I mean, like that. I guess that was your man. We all from the same building. We might be in there. So, yeah, that's his man. That's his man. But um, I just was surprised and shit. Like, I don't know nothing to respect nobody unless you're scared. Unless he's scared, I don't know him to respect nothing. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I can't uh, uh, say that Mikey ain't right about yo. He nut looked out for him. He looked out for nah, I got it. But they wasn't getting no money together. Cut nut with a Bebo that shit. <laughs> That's the truth. That's what a Bebo that shit. And he leaving out the fact that yeah, you came and why gave you the spot? Uh, bunch of bunch of balls out there. That's the reason why you couldn't come back to LG because you had to beat with Bludgeon Bar over the spot. I slept you and you were out and you brought nut out there and niggas ain't like that. And you couldn't come to the projects no more. Remember when you seen nut, you seen Mikey. You did not in LG, you did it. No Mikey and no LG. Yeah, but you heard son you heard son say that he never got money with, with nut. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, I respect that. He said that. You know what I'm saying? I respect that. And that's what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear. At least, I know this little thing that he left out about the, uh, bunch of bars. He ain't got to, he ain't got to put that in there neither. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's him. But, uh, that's what I wanted. I don't want to hear you say, oh, we was best friends. Y'all was, y'all was cool because we all was cool like that. And yeah, you and him have to be going to the same spot because you took him out there. So, yeah, we fucked with you. And he probably was going to work. He probably was going to work. Yeah, that's probably true too. But don't act like you was in the in the trenches. Nut was a motherfucker, man. And, 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 you, you know, I know that, man, very well, man. I'm from I'm from for you. I know him very well and like you very well. And nut was a motherfucker. If you let nut touch your shit, nothing. If you ain't about that aggression, nothing deep on you. Nothing deep on nut. And, and he said nut busting. No, nothing fight. And that's what the shit, that's what shit changed left. That was a bully with his hand. And when they start playing with them hammers, nothing can keep up no more. Cause he ain't about to man. Listen, you know niggas, certain niggas, is, is, you know, like I told you before, certain niggas go by the, the code that, that the streets say. They supposed to go by, and niggas gonna be like, oh, something went bad. I mean, cool, that's, that's, that's their thing, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I got nothing good things to say about State Nothing but good things. Nothing but good things. He's a good dude. Uh, I used to be a lightweight nigga. I came through the alley and all that. Now, say help me. Say help me then. I always would ask him, but, you know, as a little nigga, you need, you need that help. You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of slim, so. Yeah, that's the thing. I got my weight up. 240, but you can't take I'm right. <laughs> Say, yeah, say a good dude, man. Say about that. 
tell you about that grind, man. I don't, I don't really know say outside of jail, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, son did like 16 joints, man. Yeah, yeah. So and he was away for a long time. At young age. Yeah, they sat son down for a long time. Like, I'm in the doctor and they say he had grimy shit with him in jail. But say it was just all about the hustle. They had so many hustles in jail. Man, he's gonna pull up in the yard on me and give me loonies and all this. Yes, they think of me. But you know, I always made it happen in jail. I always motherfucking was getting that bag everywhere in jail. But, uh, yeah, but Mike, I respect, I, uh, I respect that this interview a little bit more, I guess, because he, he expressed like, yo, he wasn't there. And, yo, it was love at first. Yeah, it was love in the beginning, you know what I mean? But like he said, he wasn't he wasn't there. He couldn't come there no more. He couldn't come there no more because Mikey was never an uh, aggressive type of dude. Mikey, well, I seen that Mikey uh, chased that bag. And he, that's why he put him on there. Mike was never about that grand and nigga and LG was mostly dude LG a project was mostly dude early on so you had to be aggressive dude and then on top of being aggressive you had to stand out when you're aggressive cause everybody was aggressive Nut stood out cause Nut hands was crazy and he was big as a motherfucker he was big before he did a bit he was big Nigga went to jail before I came back and he was knocking out grown men at 15, 16 years old. But you know, when the hammers came into play, shit changed up. Shit changed up. You see, the uh, world went bad. Nah, world ain't go bad. World just motherfuckers think that, that in their generation, they used to let outsiders come in. And we wasn't, if we came up, we wasn't having that shit no more. Wasn't no outsiders coming in or nothing. And if you were signed with outsiders, or you wasn't aggressive enough to keep them out, nigga, you ain't down with the team. You gotta go too. Because I feel like, you know what I mean, speaking from my, and I ain't the only one. I'm speaking to other niggas too that was, that got that got something to say. Um, we feel like, yo, y'all, y'all, bro, y'all dudes would have had no voice if it wasn't. But we put LG on the back. We made more. We made LG uh niggas outside of the boroughs and all that know what LG was. We came through the island and smashed it and niggas was saying LG. None of the generation before that did that. Yeah, y'all niggas came through periodically. Nigga, CMB was in the full building all at one time, nigga. All at one time. Ten of us, nigga, at one time. Wow. When you, uh, 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 you said you seen fruit on the island right now, too? Yeah. Yeah, we was all in there. We were all of us in there. All yeah, yeah, son time. spoke about that too, like. Yeah, we all was in there. And, and, and that's why, you know, uh, that ain't the only reason why, but I celebrate fruit. Because a lot of us, we wasn't, like how Mikey just spoke, we wasn't jail niggas. We wasn't equipped. We didn't know what it was. And fruit was already seasoned. And fruit laid the red carpet out for us. You remember they calling that shit C seventy fruit? <laughs> you remember them days, the nine two days? Mm-hmm. And Facts. I like that he put out there that, that uh big big heck big heck and them big belly band heck and them or Mick Mick and them was 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 letting him live. Cause Mick was a monster too out there, man. I know you know Mick I am. Mick is from my building. Yeah, Mick was a monster. <laughs> Yeah, Mikey, Mikey was doing was doing his thing, but Mikey Ben couldn't come through the prize. Mikey wasn't coming through the prize the night, like 90, 91, he couldn't come through no more. You know, Thor, you heard of Thor? Nah, Thor, Thor come from Brownsville. I was proud of him. He moved to And that's how, nah, Mighty Thor, Dwayne Mike. We used to be shocked when we go play niggas from the bed. We shouting them out with the guy. They forgot you from Brownsville. <laughs> yeah. I speak to bruh every day. I mean, this is what I got niggas in my ear telling me with you, telling me don't talk to you. Yo, your story. You is the movie. I'm there through everything. I ain't get, I ain't got no periodic story. I got the whole story. The whole LG. Nigga, I, I'm, I'm come up in the in the right direct era. I got an older brother. I'm fr- I, he thought his brother named Green. I, I ain't never know they call him Green. But Ralphie. I'm, 
I'm right there in the middle of all. I'm always there. You know what I'm saying? I've always been there. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and I've been through so much shit with in, in all of those efforts. I came out when I was 14 years old. I came outside. And I locked up in Baltimore when I was 14 years old. I've been outside. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's not like oh 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 boo was gone and, and, and this way. No, if boo was gone, if boo still was in had hands on or something. Like if none of them niggas can't say LG was mine by myself at one point. Two thousand, who so crack LG if it wasn't for Boo? Nobody. Nobody. So you can't leave you can't leave me. I I can't be out the equation. No matter what I did, nigga, you can't write me out of history. Nigga, I ran that piece by myself with an iron fist. You know what I'm saying? But I came home and last man. I, yo, I'm trying to, yo, I could never change my life. I had done too much at, at, at a time, but, motherfucker, when I came home and while I was dead, nigga, that pressure wasn't on nobody but Boo. What's gonna happen? What Boo gonna do? World was in jail. What Boo gonna do? Nigga, I had to come home and show out again and get this federal, and get that federal bid. If I wanted to stay in Brooklyn, nigga, I ain't had no choice. Nigga, this weight was on me. Why is it dead? The weight was on me. Nut was calling me every day. Niggas would tell niggas. Nut was calling me every day trying to get his name out of that. Trying to get his name out of what? Out of, out of being affiliated with Wild Team Murder. Trying to get his name out of that. Come on, yo, we we'll talk to the world. Because me and Nut, me and Nut from the same building. We grew up together, too. So. In the same class and everything, 7 MS1, 176. This, the nigga like, yo, he figured he can talk to me. And he know my sh he know my shit go off crazy. And whatever world agenda is, is bull agenda. Everybody knew that. Whatever world agenda is, that's what bull agenda is. And bull is a problem. But I'm not only a problem because my shit fly. I got niggas around me that know my shit fly and they gonna shit go fly just because my shit fly. Let me ask you a question, though, my bro. Why, what, why, what was it about the dude world that niggas was so loyal to Son? Like, was he a mad good nigga? Like, on the inside, like, why was niggas so loyal to Son like that? See, 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 that's the key, that's the key question. And that's the shit why you need both. Because I love him. Even after I've done what I've done right now, I love him. That's my, yo, I love world. And I would do anything for fucking world. Anything and everything that I've done. And this world was mad smart. Mad charismatic. And don't get me wrong, he was grimy, but he was always never, he was never grimy to me. And me and him together, because world let us left with him. I think it'll tell you where the world let his hammer go to. World just smart enough to know. That what I do, what you can have another nigga do. I was always wanting to do shit. World was always, no, bro, why you doing that? Gonna be how these niggas do that. But I used to always tell him, and that shit started haunting him in the end. I used to always tell him, yo, they, we, we amongst wolves. And if the wolves don't see you feeding, after a while, you don't look like them no more. So I'm telling him, yo, we got, you got to come through. He just he stopped coming through the peas. He, he stopped fucking uh, uh, showing niggas love. He stopped. And then he started saying, if you ain't Muslim, nigga, you fuck you. All that type of shit. Like, but at that point, he was already up and nobody couldn't tell him nothing. But when it come up, world was a good, charismatic dude and he's very, very smart. He's smart to the point that FBI think he's a, he's a genius. What you mean? They, they, they said that about son? Yeah. Yeah. They said when they caught him, he had a book on the he had a book written on the shit that he was doing. Mm. The crazy shit. He had a book on him, you know, basically giving him the, the guide to do all this shit. Now, I know him and I seen them, and the last time I seen them I cried. But uh I, I he wasn't right. He wasn't right in his head last time I seen him. I know that for a fact. I know the world and I know what you it mean? could have been a medication they put him on or something like that. But, um, so I tried so many avenues not to do what I had, not to do what I did for me, man. And if nothing, was, nothing wasn't working, man. 
I told so at the end of the day, man, I said, motherfucking, we took all the we took all the lashes so world could be world. And at the end of the day, he supposed to lay it on the sword, man. He supposed to lay it on the sword because that's when that's what soldiers do. And world wanted everybody to the selfishness that he just got in him after a while. He just wanted everybody to go down. I told I said, son, if I testify, if I don't testify, so we all getting life. Nigga, you done put so many niggas in our business. We ain't seeing being what it used to be. You got all these outside niggas in our business that niggas is bringing us down anyway. So give me the okay and let me do me. And I would have went dead right back to LG and set it right back up. But son ain't one of the Son just was like, nah, nigga. Like, nigga, nah, we gonna beat him. We gonna, like, nah, we not, nigga. We done. We got niggas all around this building. Y'all, y'all was in the city. Y'all was in the feds. Y'all was in the spot all together. Yeah, I'm, when I'm telling you what I'm telling you right now, this is me and World talking in, in the MDC in the feds to each other. And I'm telling them this because when they came, first of all, I never thought that they'd come come to me and ask me to do nothing because my shit is too. I'm too involved, and I'm like, nah, they want me to. But when. Them niggas say, man, they give you a queen for a day. A queen for a day meaning you tell us everything you did and we gonna expunge everything you ever did in exchange for this. And we gonna give you a new life. When I went to the nigga to tell this nigga that, I said, yo, bro, they don't want the, uh, I said, they don't want the uh, puppet, man. They want the puppet master. That's my exact word. He was like, what you saying? I said, they, they want the puppet master, nigga. They don't care niggas got bodies or nothing. So he was like, bro, for real, for real? I said, yeah, for real, man. You need to tell a nigga what niggas need to do. Because when world tell me, this is this guy got ran down. When world say what his agenda is, he tells me, and I pass the shit down, and that's what niggas do. And I'm looking for that same thing from him in the, in the pen. And he like, nah, man, the angel's gonna come get her. The angel? Bro, you bugging? <laughs> Nigga said the angel was gonna come get me. It was happening before he went in. And uh, I used to talk to a psychologist, but they even got me seeing psych still right now. But uh, I used to talk to the psychologist, bitch, and she was telling me that uh, she spoke to him because she was supposed to review him and see if he was promising. And she was saying that he faked him. She was like, yo, he, she said, because soon when you, you test his ego, the world come out. You see the real demon come out when you touch the ego. Yeah, he had started the Terry Ray before we went in because he started saying some crazy shit about about the president and all this crazy shit that we need to smoke bush. He the anti right? Yeah, he, yeah, I, you know, I'm telling you. He said that before he went in. I heard it was rumors that they was trying to say son was in tied in with terrorists and Middle East and all type of shit. He got knocked in the Middle East. He got knocked he got in the knocked. Middle East. Yeah, see, that, y'all don't know that. <laughs> That's where he got knocked at. He was out there, he went out there to, uh, where Jesus is, where Jesus is born. You and, said? And, and Jordan, he went there to tell them that he was Jesus. What you mean, he went to tell the Muslims over there that he was Jesus? Yeah. Or, or you mean Muhammad? No. That's what he was saying. He said they want him to say that he Muhammad, but he Jesus, Isa. That's his name, that's his Muslim name, Isa. He said Jesus. He wanted to tell them that he is, he, he is the Isa, though. And he back, and that they need to follow him. And he went on over there, suppose this is what he was supposed to be going to do. He went over there. I don't know if it's true or not that he flew the range over there, though. Cause I was hearing that he flew the truck over there. I never got to talk to him and uh, ask him that he flew the range over there. Huh? Confirm them that that wasn't a concern when I when I got a chance when everybody got a chance to speak with him. But he went over there and he was talking this shit. And they, whoever uh, the embassy or whatever out there, informed the FBI here that he was out there and that they was gonna kill him out there. That he was gonna fuck around and get killed out there talking some shit like that. And <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. He was in the Middle East trying to throw them niggas under pressure out there. Trying, try, trying, to, trying to build a new following. And World told me a while back, he said, yo, when all else failed to get people to follow you, religion, build a cult. 
I told you this shit a long time. The world was way, yo, the world was so fucking smart, bro. You know, the world was so fucking smart. The world just had an ego problem. And the world wanted to challenge everybody that think they tough. If you think you tough, the world want a problem with you. He want to show you that you ain't tough. Everybody, that's how we actually went drunk. We, we could have got a lot of love, man, but the world just wanted to challenge this nigga name from Best Eyes. Just flipping them things crazy. And at one point, the world was gonna stop, was passing birds out and giving them the niggas. He then gave like three different crews birds. So, the uh, world was like, yo, that nigga ain't holler at me. So, we like, the nigga. Whenever he outside on uh, with the, uh, Tompkins and I think whenever he stand outside, it'd be like North Dad, it'd be like 25 niggas around. World Ride Line was like, uh, told the nigga, um, yeah, you missed me. And kept it pushing. He didn't stop and get out. He just drove by the nigga, told the nigga, yo, you missed me. And the word was the nigga told the nigga told the niggas, yo. I ain't know how to get in contact with something. I was sent something. But before he could even get in motion to even try, world got us out there trying to kidnap the nigga. <laughs> world got us out there trying to kidnap the nigga. Trying to set him up at all. Cause niggas love world. We we used to go anywhere in the sky. Niggas niggas the bank to put in work for us, bro. Niggas that ain't know us and nothing, niggas to run up the world cards. But yo, I see niggas like, yo, I put them in. Yeah, niggas be begging to put in work for niggas. Stranger, niggas be, niggas be wanting to put in work for niggas. Because the world whole thing was that niggas seeing niggas dropping, but they like, damn, this is one nigga, but he had many arms. And I was the main component of those arms. And he was controlled. Dudes is up there telling stories and. and and I ain't saying stories of their lives, I'm saying telling their story. And it's not involving what dudes feel like, that's not LG. All right, you want to talk about the 80s? Well, ain't nobody been talking about the 80s in the night. Bruh, and I feel like, 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 might be talking, like, be intentionally trying to, uh, to weave around certain shit. Like, you intentionally say, oh, yeah, world was doing, well, how world was doing, how world get the project? You ain't, how that happen? Well, I told you, I said, yo, is it going to be a journalistic thing? Cause you can't take sides. You want the story or you don't want the story. Because niggas that, that, that want the story, the niggas interviewing Stanley the Bull. They interviewing uh, 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 Joey Gass, Pipe, and them niggas. Been with all of them niggas, too. Play chess with Stanley every morning. And, and you hear me, that old niggas in shape for his age, too. Them niggas, them other niggas, uh, uh, them niggas, uh, Joe McCann, no, no, I was with Joey, too, man. Them niggas was, them niggas was crazy. Bodies out of shape. Man, they ran the stand and stand with hands, feet, and everything on them. <laughs> for real. And I was with Poe for four years before Poe. I'm going to that. Same, same unit. Same unit, me and Poe. Four years before. I was there when he went home. Yeah, but he couldn't leave, though. He couldn't stop. Everybody knew that. If he was with Poe, man, Poe couldn't let. He had to let motherfuckers know he was out for while we was in there. You know, certain niggas is in, in the inside with the protection when you get inside. Niggas is ducking, trying to hide who they is. They don't want nobody to know the police who they are, whatever. Poe couldn't duck. Poe was one of everybody. I'm like, I'm out. Oh, well, you don't know who I am? I'm just <laughs> Poe couldn't duck it. Yeah, he was making moves in there. We still was making moves. And I think that's why he thought he could go back because he had niggas from home coming to see him in Omaha. Yo, it ain't going to be your generation, though, Poe. I said, it ain't going to be a nigga from your generation, though. It's gonna be a young nigga, they gonna off you. Nah, I'm good, I'm good. I said, all right. And I wasn't really feel I told I nigga, if, if I wasn't in a situation I was in, I'd be ready to get at you over the Dimensio shit, cause nigga Brooklyn don't know you at all. And that's the that's the thing I wanted to hit on. I watch all of the stories about these other dudes, right, lad? And and me being around certain dude, I know different. I'd be like, damn, man, everybody told me to do stories all crazy, all fucked up. I just watched this shit on Poe last night, and he's like, oh, he, he was born in um, Poe. He was born in Poe from Brooklyn. You said, oh, son is, Brooklyn. you said son is originally from Brooklyn? Yeah. From where? What's that street? 
uh, uh, like borderline Bushwick and Brownsville. Um, damn, I forgot the name of that street though. I'm talking about niggas to make his mom tell me. Mom from such and such on a visit. And I used to always be like, man, we ain't claiming you. You ain't from Brooklyn. Dude, I'm really from Brooklyn. Damn. You talking Green about and, uh, Patchen, Patchen, from Patchen. Hmm. Yeah, I know, I know Patchen. Who from here? From Harlem? I mean, he raised in Harlem, though. He grew up in Harlem, though, but. Oh, we put up your mom. Tell him I'm from where we, where, where, where I was born at, where we came from. His mother told me I was mother. Mama heard her say from that. Yeah, yeah. And I told I used to tell him I said that's why you stood out in Harlem. Brooklyn known to bring gunners in Harlem didn't. So when you, you you was a little gunner, you stood out there. But I said in Brooklyn you'd have been a regular. You'd have been a regular nigga in Brooklyn. You'd be an average nigga. You know how to you know how to hug free. Yeah, you talking about uh, uh, yo Jay or Fifty? Uh, Holland. Jay don't like the world. Yes. So I was there. I was there when World was alive with Fifty. Like, I know exactly what this. Is. He was the one that was actually blowing that Fifty at that video shoot. Nah, it was my man Stro. Stro was blowing that. World was there though. Stro was blowing that. And Providence basketball team locker room. Motherfucker, we had 50 hemmed up in there. He was copping, please, and all they told him. I want to do the magic video. They won't let me do it. Nigga, I was there. <laughs> and what's there, you know, it stood us out from niggas. It's, it's like Mikey was saying, niggas had love. And niggas still had love for niggas. niggas I still had, like, I love nothing, but nigga, you going against, this my team over here. You're against my team, nigga, that's it. it, it it's, it's not about how, how I loved you coming up, how we... It wasn't about that. Now it's about you against the team, nigga. You gotta go. That's it. I can still say, yo, yeah, yeah, I love him. I can still give him, I can still give him his props and say, nut was the end. Nut, nut was this, nut was that. I can still, I'm, I'm never gonna, I'm so thorough with this shit, even when I was in the street before all this. If a nigga get busy, nigga, I'm gonna say, yo, I nigga get busy. That ain't gonna stop me from going at his head, though. You know what I'm saying? That's how real, that's how, that's real. That's how real nigga give it up. You you don't say because you don't like a nigga or he's pussy. Nah, that nigga ain't pussy. I don't give a fuck if I don't like him or not. He ain't pussy, though. Know? That's a fact, though. But you got niggas saying, oh, yo, uh, like that nigga King Ernie was dog and post. Oh, yo, all that shit he did, that shit don't count. This all right, bro, so wait to go to them niggas' arms and tell them niggas to wake them niggas up. The game is over. They can get up now. I'm that shit. All them bodies killing them don't count. They can get up. They can wake up now. Nah, nigga, that shit's forever. He done it. What he done after that is what he done. I done what I done. The reality is, this is how it all ends. This is how it all ends. Either you gonna get murdered, you gonna testify for your freedom, or you gonna be in the can for the rest of your life. And the bottom. facing a needle though. We yeah. was facing the music. <laughs> yeah, I we heard. We were facing no numbers at first. That's crazy. We, nigga, we, they had to take the, in order for me to get any type of deal, they had to take death penalty off the table. That's the first thing. Congress got to take death penalty off the table. And once you murder for hire, like you take money from niggas to kill niggas too. Hey, that's death penalty. Mm. Black, uh, anything that's, anything that's uh, uh, premeditated, you eligible. And, you, and, and, and like Mikey said, one thing about us niggas from over there, we always plan shit. We always plan shit. We wasn't, we wasn't uh, knocking niggas off on a humble and oh, see a nigga beef with a nigga and then shoot a nigga. Nah, we was, we was plotting and planning to kill niggas and kidnap niggas and all that type of shit. And when you got multiple of them shit, you, look, you haven't looked in a dictionary and seen the definition of a serial killer? Yeah, that shit is a serial killer. Yeah, once you kill, once you repeatedly kill, you're a serial killer. Yeah. The, 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 the society try to say, oh, it's a crazy person. But dang with the, dang with the, uh, the, what the definition is. What the definition is, you repeatedly kill, nigga, you're a serial killer. Yeah, and, and, and that's why, even though they, they, they gave me play and, and I, I still, I gotta go see a psych every fucking month.
or we gonna end up going into because like i said i ain't just here to exploit the violence and shit like that but we no, go and, and that's what i want to I, I, I like that you said that because that's what i want to i, I want to shine light on that too that it comes a time when i kept doing what i was doing because i knew what i had to do and that, i just went on anything i do that i believe it i'm gonna go 100 at it so i ain't stop because nigga, i had a body when i was 14 years old if they would ever fucking call me when i was 17 going to college and decided to change i'm gonna go with 25 you know back then you think 25 years that's forever <laughs> what you mean they, they caught you three years later for the first body? Hell no, they never catch me. <laughs> they never catch me for my first body. Until this shit. I had to confess that I did that back then. But but living living life in the hood after I know I done done certain shit like that, I'm thinking I ain't no turning back. I done already went too far to turn back. I need to know what happened to a motherfucker that made a nigga feel like he had to be a killer. Like who, what, what, yeah. it's always a turning point in a nigga life, something that happened to him. You feel me that, you know, nobody came out the womb like, yo, I'm a, I'm a bust my gun and kill niggas. Niggas was put in certain positions in certain areas where certain shit was going on and they had to adapt to survive. Oh, 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 Ron K was, for me, world, Peter Rag, all of us. You know, for our uh, generation, Ron K was, was our impression. We wanted to be Ron K. Ron K was a fucking killer. And everybody in that hood respected him, though. And was, well, was scared of him, you know, with, with that fear came that respect. But his impression, I, and, and I'm old enough today to realize that when I'm driving and, 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 and my daughter's in the back seat and I'm saying certain things to her that's coming to me naturally and I'm thinking about them afterwards I analyze all my conversations still like I'm in the street and I think about damn I, you never know what you said to that child at that moment that may stick with her 50 years after you did it it's a fact that's a and, fact. And, and a lot of us was in, was, was was easily impressionable with certain dudes, man. Some of those was put in corners and had to fight out and stuff like that. But some dudes chose the route to. My thing, I always wanted to be respected. That's why Guapring was the hardest thing in the world. I, I was throwing away my name. I felt like I was throwing away the shit that I built. But then I had to, I was getting old enough to realize like, damn, what that shit gonna mean when I'm sitting in jail uh, 20 years from now and them little niggas, they don't even, they gonna be like, oh yeah, that nigga fool, that like, while they smoking a the blunt, then I'm forgot about it, they not gonna send me a pack, they not gonna check a call, I'm done, it's, it's a wrap. Your story is ended and you're still alive, you dead free. So all right now, I feel like I live too loud, I live, I got another life. How long it's gonna last? I don't know. A law, a law, no bet. But uh, shit, I'm getting to taste something different. Niggas don't even know. You know? Do you know that that niggas can operate and, and and uh and come home and and, and, and put in work and, and bring their man home? You know about that? But nobody don't know because they man ain't blow it up. That he flipped on him and then he went out there and put in work for them people and brought another nigga in to bring him back home. They be doing all the time. Man, that shit's a filthy game, man. You see that shit, it's like, first of all, how the fuck you gonna let a nigga back on the street here and kill all these people? That go to show right there. The world, world was a threat because world was a mind. They don't want a dangerous mind like that on the street. They don't want the motherfuckers to kill. They want the motherfuckers to create killers. You can create niggas to kill, so you the target. Fuck all the niggas that killed that body. We want you off the street. And their biggest fear is a small motherfucking group, an organized small group that you fly under the radar. Even though, you know, some little niggas ain't gonna want to listen to their feelings, but you might spark a mind somewhere. I'm not trying to save my reputation anymore. I just want the story to be told right, correctly. I'm not trying to save, uh, uh who played the killer and, and, oh, I'm about, nah, I'm not, fuck all that.
did you ever get a chance to speak to Son afterwards? What, after I justified? Yeah. Nah. I the last time I seen him, when I was walking up that stand, walking by. I cried, man. Yo, if anybody know, man, if anybody know and they tell the truth, man, they, they speak a fool in the world, niggas can tell you, man, fool love world. Yo, so I went against everything and everybody always, man. You know what I mean? Top been locked up and all that shit, and shit I ain't do. I ain't, I ain't never do no shit like what I had to do this last time, man. But it was over, and I'm seeing it was over. One thing about me, yeah, I was a loyal, I'm a loyal, loyal soldier, but I had a brain. And anybody that knows, who could think though? 